so everything okay thank you very much for inviting me to uh give us a, a talk here i'm hoping i i was going to say something yeah we haven't started yet uh well we start in two minutes oh we start in two minutes okay i'm okay so I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you and uh, people are still having coffee excellent thank you thank you Okay, so uh, let's let's get started. It's my pleasure to introduce our second speaker today, Professor Daryl Holm from Imperial, and he will talk about Kelvin's circulation theorem in climate science. Daryl, please. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me to give a talk here. I was actually trying to put together something that would involve statistical mechanics, integrability, and dispersive hydrodynamics. Uh, but in the last minute, I sort of chickened out, but I will uh, maybe indicate how that might work. Uh, so uh, applying Kelvin's circulation theorem in climate science, how's this going to work? So the prediction of climate change and its impact on extreme weather events is one of the great society and the intellectual challenges. This challenge has three parts. First, we have to be able to distinguish between weather and climate. Uh, and then we have to understand the dynamics of the fluctuations of the physical variables. And then we have to determine how the correlations in the fluctuation dynamics will drive the variances of the statistical description. Of course, that the invariances are increasing then the probability for extreme events is increasing and well okay so how would such a model look so in this talk we're going to start with talking about how the uh, calvin nurther circulation theorem organizes fluid modeling and then we'll put Craignan's stochastic Lagrangian paths into the Calvin Nerther circulation theorem. So this is how Calvin, the Calvin circulation theorem is entering this idea. We first make fluid dynamics stochastic by introducing correct non-stochastic Lagrangian paths into the circulation theorem. Uh, this is a new thing. Uh, correct non introduced stochastic Lagrangian paths into uh, the invected quantities. 
and all through the 80s uh, in turbulence theory, uh, everything was always about uh, Quaikland's model and some gauge theoretical version of, K of uh, Quaikland's model. And it was always about uh, advection. Uh, the Calvin theorem comes into play because the loop in the Calvin theorem is advected by the flow. So this is this is the hint of how we could introduce Kelvin's uh, now into Quaikland's model into Kelvin's theorem. Okay, we introduce it into the loop, right? Uh, next, next, I uh, will put McCain's mean field stochastic advection into Kelvin's theorem. Once we have once we have a stochastic fluid dynamics model. Uh, with the stochastic Kelvin theorem, then we can introduce a mean field theory uh, uh, for the stochastic advection and break it up into mean and fluctuating parts. So at, at that point, we will have, uh, with, if we can find that uh, a, a wonderful thing happens because of this structure. We're putting the, putting the stochasticity into Kelvin's uh, the loop and then using McCain's uh, sort of non-local probabilistic description with an expectation in the dynamics uh, allows the expectation and the fluctuation dynamics to separate. And then that leads to the evolution equations for the, for the variances. Okay, and there are lots of worked examples. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about all of them, and but of course they're sort of toy examples. Uh, the the one I was thinking of you know, for introducing the integrability case was to be it was that maybe a little selfish. I was thinking of introducing it into the Kamasa Home equation for this talk. Uh, but it what I have in the talk actually is for Euler equations is in more in more dimensions. It's probably more interesting. And so we can ask ourselves then, well, okay, does this really apply to climate modeling? Uh, and we can ask if it says something about extreme events in, in the examples, uh, you know, uh, Euler's equation, Burkitt's equation. Uh, of course, it's not uh, really applying to climate modeling, but it is what a climate model would look like. Uh, if you could write down predictive evolution equations for the statistics uh, of the system. Okay, so we're only making this single stream of thought, right? We're going to link the ideas uh, from Florence, who said, well, climate is what you expect. Right, and he introduced this idea of the, of uh, climate being a probabilistic, but dynamically probabilistic object, and he raised a lot of questions about this issue, uh, such as, uh, is there was there a, was there a time at which we could measure the climate and then predict the climate we have today? Uh, yeah, I think you can raise this question. Uh, so Lorenz made the ideas all probabilistic, but dynamical. Uh, and uh, in order to get going with that, you need to derive some stochastic form of geometric mechanics. Uh, and the way to do that is to constrain the variations in Hamilton's principle for the fluid dynamics, for example. Uh, to follow Craignan by introducing stochastic Lagrangian histories. So the Lagrangian trajectories become stochastic processes in Hamilton's principle. And then when you take the variations, you get stochastic fluid equations. And the stochastic fluid equations have a Kelvin circulation theorem. And the Kelvin circulation theorem uh, has a stochastic loop. The loop moves with the stochastic flow. 
Okay, now to derive the dynamics of expectation, we follow McKean and then introduce mean field plus stochastic fluctuations into Calvin's theorem, uh, and and then and then calculate the implications. So, this is where we're going. Okay, so why are we invoking Calvin's theorem? Well, remember Calvin's circulation theorem is that a loop. A uh, closed loop of material points, which is moving with the flow, uh, has the integral of the velocity of the flow dotted into the line element for the this loop uh, was preserved by an, uh, by the flow of an ideal fluid, and the flow of an ideal fluid is a you know is it's a push forward of a of a smooth and vertible map. Uh, and the point about it is, if the Crichton's idea is to make this a smooth and vertible map, which depends on time, make it depend on time in a stochastic way. So if you do that, then you will have a stochastic Kelvin circulation theorem. But why would that be the thing to do? It turns out that Kelvin circulation theorem plays a central role in modeling fluid dynamics. Because the idea of reduction by symmetry in Hamilton's principle, and the symmetry here is relabeling of the Lagrangian initial positions or the Lagrangian labels, uh, takes you from the Lagrangian description to the Eulerian description of fluid dynamics. And that Lagrangian description uh, has a a Calvin theorem, which comes from Noether's theorem, actually, it turns out, it comes of the symmetry of the uh, relabeling of the parcels, of the Lagrangian parcels, gives the conservation law, and that conservation law is Calvin's theorem. So this is called the Calvin Noether theorem, and every very every set of equations that follows from a Hamilton's principle in the Eulerian framework, no matter how you're going to be approximating it, will always have the Kelvin Noether theorem. And in the evidence for it, sometimes you can see very obviously is that you have a conserved potential vorticity. All these equations have that feature. And on top of it, you can always Legendre transform these equations, these fluid equations, and calculate their Eulerian conservation laws, relative equilibrium, and so forth, in the Hamiltonian framework. So there sits Kelvin's theorem. It's a property of all of these models of fluid equations. OK, so let's look at the deterministic version. The deterministic version of Kelvin's theorem is, coincides with Newton's law for the evolution of the Momentum per unit mass uh, concentrated, call it V, concentrated on an advecting material loop uh, C, which is being uh, uh, which is which follows uh, the smooth invertible map at a velocity U, which is uh, phi dot phi inverse. So if you take the time derivative inside by going into a frame which is moving with the flow you'll get to here. If you go back to the frame of the, of the, of the inertial frame, uh, of the Eulerian frame, uh, the result of the time derivative will give you the Lie derivative of this uh, one form of uh, momentum per unit mass. You know, then you can just think of this as, as having arisen from the chain rule after this change of, of uh, variables. Uh, and then uh, that's the, this guy, according to Newton's law, is the integral around the mass distributed in a loop uh, of the force per unit mass. And this is just Newton's law. Okay, so here's a, a quick way of saying this in terms of pullback by this smooth invertible map. Now the trick is to follow Kraken okay, and make this map its velocity in this map depend on time stochastically. This was a deterministic story. 
Okay, so Craig Dunn envisioned the stochastic Lagrangian histories, and it, they might look something like this. This is uh, a compilation of satellite uh, of images of drifters on the ocean near New Zealand uh, for the, since 1981. Okay, so this is, and so what, you, what we see is, uh, well, it might look like that. This is just a way of uh, envisioning how the flow might look. Okay, so Craig Don suggested that uh, we would just change the advection velocity uh, to a stochastic, um, to a stochastic process, maintaining the divergent free condition. While well, we do that, he didn't suggest, and he suggested that the advection would be in this by this quantity, which would be a drift uh, and also uh, a white noise. Sorry, that should be a small x. Um, so the Xs, you know, are tell us something about the spatial distribution of the noise, right? So you can you can see looking here that the if this is what the process looks like, it'll have different spatial uh, distributions. So we're going to need Xs to describe that. Okay. So now we just simply apply uh, Crichton's idea in Calvin's theorem, and we take a stochastic differential in time. Uh, we apply the chain rule, uh, which gives the lead derivative now with respect to the stochastic vector field, uh, dx, and this is our equation. Okay, so if the noise is white, then all this goes through uh, it just in a in the standard way for um, you know for stochasticity with Brownian motion. Uh, however, the climate is likely to be not Brownian motion. You know, it's likely to be something that may have some colored noise in it, and then this will then this uh, dx of t will have corrections in it. The one correction is called the Levy area. Uh, and so there's an issue about uh, whether the whether the uh, fluctuations would be Brownian or not. Uh, if they're not Brownian, then this needs to be added to the model. Okay. So now, in order to introduce McKean's idea, Okay, then we, we're going to think about this uh, process uh, modified by just taking the, so it's a new process now with capital X. Uh, we modify it by introducing the drift as being an expected drift that comes from the expectation of the solution of this entire process. All right, let's not get ahead of ourselves. And by asking, how could we do that? How could we know the expected drift if we are thinking about data, you know, that has some stochasticity to it? Then just wait. This this turns out to work well because of the Kelvin theorem. Okay, so now these Cs will be the Cs associated with the space. It's still associated in the fixed space. But the space, uh, these and these are this x of t will be the trajectory through that fixed space of this process now, McKean process. Okay, well, Kelvin theorem tells us what to do. Okay, we'll make now we'll make the loop move with this McKean process, uh, and we have uh, a, a chance of writing down the equations. Okay, by using the chain rule and now taking the lead derivative with respect to the with the McKean um, um, process. Okay, so what does it look like? Uh, we're going to go the stochastic uh, uh, geometric mechanics uh, 
produces the, what's called the salt Euler Poincare equations. The salt stands for uh, stochastic advection by lead transport. So th this is the form of the equations. This is the Lagrangian and Hamilton's principle. This is the momentum associated with the velocity, u with the drift velocity. And this is the process, the stochastic transport vector field. This is the Craigman step. Okay. Now to take the McKean step, we're going to uh, change the equation to enable to make this process, the stochastic process, uh, in this mean plus fluctuations process that McKean introduced. Uh, and so we call these things the Lagrangian average salt equations. And now what happens is that there's an expectation uh, in the for the velocity, which on the Hamiltonian side is the variational derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the momentum density. Uh, and uh, so it just then we just write this in some kind of a, a shortened way uh, for the right hand side for the expectation of the forces. We can see in a minute uh, that the forces can have also st stochasticity. I just wanted you to see the shape of the equations. So mu is this dl du. Mu is going to be our new variable. We're going to use mu uh, uh, to write the equations because it has this simple form. OK. So, so the, the LA salt equations uh, have the property uh, that in Ito form, that so now you transform from Struktanovich into Ito form, that there's a correction here, which is a double lead derivative acting on this mu, uh, this momentum per, uh, density, which is variation of the Lagrangian and Hamilton's principle, the deterministic part of so this is the usual equation, but now it has a McKean process. In the in the transport velocity, and it has an Ito uh, a type of noise. We want to want to go to Ito noise so that we can take the expectation of this equation to get the equation for the ex, uh, for the expected mu uh, momentum density. Uh, if we do if when because when we take the expectation of anything times uh, Ito noise. It vanishes. So when we take this expectation, we get an equation with closes for the expected variable uh, expectation of the momentum density. Uh, this is the beauty of having gone through the Kelvin theorem form, because now we have a, a, a form of the equation of the motion. Uh, which is, well, if we were looking at this in terms of uh, f fluid velocity vectors, uh, this would be the advected derivative of the velocity of the, well, in, this would be the advected derivative of the momentum density, which is the velocity in Euler's equation. And this is minus this double lead derivative of the expectation. Uh, and here we've used that the expectation, right? When we take the expectation, these guys are all fixed. We just get the expectation. Uh, okay, so, but the point about it is that this double lead derivative is a, um, it, it's equal to, on the Riemannian manifold, the, this double lead derivative is equal to the Laplacian uh, plus the Riemann scalar uh, curvature. So, uh, and on, flat, on a flat space, it's just equal to the Laplacian when these Cs are constant. Cs, remember though, they des they describe the distribution of the of the of of the noise uh, in space. Those are things that you have to get from data assimilation for a given problem that you're looking at, and you're trying trying to use them to multi to 
to model uh, the things you can't resolve, but you know you want to model the effects of those things by some stochasticity. And well, the remarkable thing is that uh, McKean's uh, the expected equation in the case where the, where the noise is has a constant amplitude is the Navier-Stokes equation, right? These are actually the Navier-Stokes equations uh, here. Uh, and the other feature about it is that McKean's uh, form of the equations have produced some type of uh, regularizing term in the what would otherwise just be the Euler equations for the expectation. So the expectation is uh, more regular than the original solution, the Euler equations, and is more regular in a way which we recognize, right? It's the Navier-Stokes type of regularity. Okay, so the LA salt uh, Euler equations include uh, Navier-Stokes. Okay, here's how it would look if we just were beginning with with Euler equations with our Strutanovich noise. Here's the pressure. Now we allow the pressure to have this. I told you could have the stochastic aspects of the pressure as well. Uh, Here's the Ito form. Ito form brings in this uh, double Lee derivative. Okay. We take the expectation, we get a Lee Laplacian version of the Navier Stokes equation. And uh, when the Lee Laplacian version is well posed, then it turns out the uh, Ito fluctuation equations uh, will also be well posed. So let's look at the fluctuation equations. Fluctuation variables are defined this way. Okay, and if you take the difference between in the Edo forms and the the uh, between the Edo forms for salt and for LA salt, we get the Edo fluctuation equations. These equations are closed, right? So mu prime, right? Mu prime is the fluctuation. This guy here is an, an expectation. This guy's constant. This is mu times uh, the Brownian motion, uh, and there's mu prime. So these are closed. Uh, so we can not, so we can pair these equations with corresponding dual variables, right? The whatever if mu is a density, the dual variable would be a scalar, and we would pair it in L in L two. Okay. Then what we find is we get the equations for the uh, for the variances, the expectations of the uh, of the of the norm or the the met, you know, the metric of the or amplitude in L two of the fluctuation. Okay, so this is the expectation of the integration of the fluctuation squared over the domain. And this is the point I wanted to make. I don't think anybody could have guessed that uh, what kinds of uh, correlations appear. This is just, this is only the kinetic part of the equation. We, there's also possible to introduce the advective quantities, but uh, this is the thing that surprised me the most about this model is that the equations for the variances, uh, we can find them. And when you find them, they involve correlations that you just wouldn't have thought of. Okay, so uh, a lot of work needs to be done to try to figure out how to predict the variances. Uh, but there is a there is a model that allows you to do it. Uh, it's this model that follows Lorenz and Crichton and McKean uh, and produces equations in the end uh, for the variances. Okay, so here's what we've done. Uh, we looked, we derived stochastic Euler fluid equations, which are nonlinear in the sense of McKean, 
uh, and they can be generalized to include a vector quantity. So it, all of those models in the beginning that came from uh, the modifications of Hamilton's principle can be made into LA salt models. So in certain cases, the dynamical equations for the expected values uh, decouple as the dissipative subsystem from the fluctuation dynamics. The fluctuation dynamics is linear. It can be solved separately. Uh, a particular case yields an extension of the Navier-Stokes equations to include a double E derivative dissipation. It's a dissipation provided uh, provided the scalar curvature is not too large. Um, the okay, otherwise, if it if the scalar curvature is small enough, then this operator is uh, uh, positive definite. Um, so the stochastic PDEs for the dynamics of the fluctuations uh, uh, can be found, right? And uh, these the fluctuations are transported by the PDE solutions of the expected values. Okay, so they're 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 linear equations, and the statistical properties of the fluctuation variances can be found to evolve dynamically, but they're driven by an intricate array, array of correlations. And the analytical conditions are found in which the LAC salt fluid equations uh, are well posed. So um, thank you very much for listening to my talk. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Yeah, okay. So let me let me just say that if we modify that Euler equation case uh, in one dimension to the to the Kamas home case, we could be looking at uh, the uh, expected equations for the stochastic Kamas home equations. The the uh, stochastic Kamas home equations still produce pecans. Uh, the probability, you know, with positive probability, and I think, yeah, in the numerics shows that they are, uh, you know, that these are a, a robust feature, even uh, with stochasticity. And uh, nobody has studied the McKean version of those equations yet. Uh, yes, thank you. So I had a question. Um, so you see you reproduce the Navier-Stokes equation. So if you uh, restrict to one dimension, can you reproduce um, anomalous transport and superdiffusion with this method? Oh, it's, uh, it wouldn't, is yeah. It's not anomalous in the sense that, it's anomalous in the sense that it's not low Laplacian. Okay, uh, but, okay, so if we, if we, well, let's see, uh, look here, okay. Uh, so there's something else uh, that's going on besides the Laplacian, okay. And it and that's the point. Uh, it, what's anomalous about it is that there's something about fluctuations, which is in you know, which is changing really the definition of uh, uh in this case, right, uh, the definition of this Ito correction, okay? But so the, for a stochastic process, right, this term here uh, is, it could be called the anomalous diffusion. Uh, anomalous diffusion, uh, you know, comes up in statistical mechanics in terms of, you know, uh, intermittency, uh, or, well, actually, intermittency sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? So maybe there is some connection with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. More questions?
No. Let's uh, thank our speaker again. Thank you very much, Daryl. Very welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me.